<laughs> so today's going to be part four, but this was part one of the resurrection series that I'm talking about. Um, when I was growing up as a Christian, Christmas was a big deal, Easter was a big deal, but, you know, there's this period called Lent that people go through, right? Like a lot of people know what that is, and it's leading up to the crucifixion. It's reminding ourselves how important it was that Jesus died for our sins. And they do 40 days of fasting, and we were told to always, you know, give something up that was really valuable to us. And that, that's a good idea, you know, that, that idea of, of fasting is just really powerful. But there's a 50-day period between the resurrection and the day of Pentecost. And that's a really big deal, right? Because to the, to the Jews, they were coming out of Egypt, and Passover was a miracle of the opening of the Red Sea and coming out of slavery. And then 50 days later, Moses is up on the mountain and he gets the law, and that's what the, the Jews celebrate in their holiday. But you know what we celebrate on the day of Pentecost is when Holy Spirit came. And God said, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all flesh. So this first one was from a couple of years ago. Um, we had been to Glory of Zion in Texas in 2019. And when we came back, I shared a vision that I saw while I was down there and how the Lord opened up uh, the season that we're in uh, and, and how, how important this holiday is that we call Easter, right? So I would just ask just this open-ended question. If you say it to most people, what does Easter mean if you're a Christian? It celebrates the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, right? I'd say it's probably the greatest day in all of history on the, on the church calendar. His advent in Christmas is important, but if he didn't come out of that tomb, then death would not have been defeated. And if the wages of sin are death, and you live a sinless life, there's no death, because there's no sin. There's no paycheck from the devil. Anybody know what that's like, getting a paycheck from the devil? When you sinned and he gave you your paycheck? It wasn't fun, was it? I'd much rather work for Jesus. So... What happened? How did it become this? But would it be just like the devil to get our minds off of the fact that the resurrection power lives inside of us and get us sidetracked with addiction to sugar? <laughs> right? He, he plays dirty. This one on the bottom left there, you could actually buy that at the store and set that up on your lawn. Like, to celebrate what? The Easter Bunny? Let's not do that. Let's recognize this is really important that people understand the hope that we have. We're going to talk about the verse that says, walk by faith and not by sight. Right? We've, sure, we've all heard that. But if, if you dig in a little bit, you realize that we have faith in something. And the faith is that our bodies are going to be resurrected. That's a really good thing. The older we are, the louder we should shout. <laughs> right? We're getting new bodies. Hallelujah. I'm real happy about that. So let's keep this picture in mind, not the Easter bunny and egg hunts. And, you know, I know that's fun. I get it. But it's like Halloween. Like, whoa, no, I don't think we have to celebrate one of Satan's holidays. And the Easter bunny is just a big distraction from this. No greater love has anyone than this that they would lay down their life for a friend and we get called into this Christian life and then we lay down our lives for other people because we're modeling the master, the one that we aspire to, to be like. And he's forming us into his image and his image is a servant, right? I did not come to be served, I came to serve. And I can't be reminded of this enough because it's easy to start bossing people around, isn't it? No, we don't do that. So this was uh, Palm Sunday this year was part two. And then this was when we spoke the day of Passover, Easter, uh, Resurrection Sunday. It's got a lot of names. And we talked about it as finished. If you remember a couple, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about this cycle of sin. And you read it throughout the Bible. As soon as Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they were evicted from the garden. And, the, and God posted an angel and said, nope, sorry, sin is separating you from the Father you have to stay out there. And we lost a whole lot when that happened. Yeah. But we gained a whole lot on Pentecost. And Pentecost is powerful because Jesus went and brought his blood to the mercy seat in heaven. And once that sacrifice was accepted by the Father, boom, he gives us Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it would be hard to understand what he says, I'm leaving you and it's good that I go away. Do you remember when he said that? 
So the disciples, that would seem counterintuitive, wouldn't it? You've seen all these miracles while you were here. How could it be better? In fact, he said, greater things than these will be done by little old me and little old you. It doesn't matter what your education level is. It doesn't matter what any credentials the world would give. It matters if you're men and women after God's own heart. And then you preach a message without even saying a word by the way you live your life. And other people can be drawn into the kingdom just by the witness of watching how you live. I heard one uh, theologian said the reason that he sent them out two by two into the culture was so that people could see how Christians interact with each other different than how the culture interacts, how they help one another. One puts 1,000 to flight, two put 10,000 to flight. It's that threefold cord of a partnership, not just in a marriage, but in life. Our connection with each other gives us protection from sin. That's, that's the motto of the local church. When you're living lives together, you're not alone. Think about that isolation. If, if you're already in prison, they punish you more by putting you in solitary confinement. Get up, get up, get up. <laughs> get up out of that grave. Get up, get up, get up. Get up out of that bed. Get up out of that depression. Allow the joy of the Lord. Come into the presence of God because where the presence of the Lord is, there's freedom. Chains break because of the power of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, you probably like me have found out that the longer you serve the Lord, the more humbling it is because you end up realizing you had a lot of good ideas, but they weren't always God ideas. And you have to learn how to separate those two things out. And the way you do that is by praying. And that's the other thing. When we get the Spirit of God, it's not just about the gifts of the Spirit. It's the nature of God living right on the inside of you. And in the days when Jesus was being taught, and they didn't have schools the way we have them. People were apprentices underneath a, a, an expert. So carpenter or how, any other of the trades, boat building or fishing. You didn't sit in a classroom and learn in a book. You went out and you did the work and you watched. And then you were watched by somebody who was uh, apprenticing you, who was uh, developing you, discipling you, to be like them in that skill. And we've lost that, and it's a little too much head knowledge now. So if you would do it with me for the next few weeks, focus on what happened between the resurrection, even that day, how many different people he appeared to. And in the Gospel of John, he was walking on the beach, and it's got this language like they were afraid to say it, but they knew it was the Lord, but they didn't know for sure. You know how that was? And, and Thomas said, I'm not going to believe it unless I see him myself and, and I touch him. And Jesus said, okay, go ahead, put your finger right here. And he's like, no, nah, I'm good. <laughs> Changed my mind. And I said this already, like, this would be part four, okay? So two years ago was part one. Uh, Palm Sunday, we call it the week before what we celebrate Easter, would have been part two. Easter Sunday would have been part three, and this is part four now. Of all that same theme of the resurrection and helping us understand just how amazingly powerful it is and to just be upset that we allow the substitution of an Easter bunny to take away the power that we should be focusing on so much. Because this life is a trial for sure, but the life that's coming is going to be amazing. And it's not this spirit disembodied, you know, sitting on a cloud playing a harp. It's going to be actively ruling and reigning with Christ forever. And that makes it much easier for me to go through whatever trials I'm going through. Because I know there's a cause. Like David said to his brothers, is there not a cause? We have a, a history uh, as people of God. We have the, 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 the testaments of God in us. We have his presence. We're his people. This giant is an uncircumcised Philistine and he's going down. Yeah. It took a young guy to do that who had courage. You know, another thing I realized the longer I've been a pastor is how much power unbelief has. That it's got its own dark anointing. When, when we allow too much doubt to come into our minds and we stop taking every thought captive and we drift away because of our circumstances or my, my job is very secular. I, I work with mostly unsaved people when I'm in the marketplace. And, and it's also kind of a greed industry, right? People go to Wall Street because they can make a lot of money. And we know that it says the love of money is the root of all evil. But why wouldn't he want us there as missionaries, right? And New York's the financial capital of the world, so there's some big demons over there. But God is bigger. And we're seeing those people getting saved all the time because they realize how empty it is and how hard they worked and they came up empty. The devil made them false promises. 